Well, here we are with uh, Jarno Trulli at the Lotus headquarters uh, in Hingham in Norfolk the day after the British Grand Prix. Jarno, uh, talk us through the British Grand Prix. Again, two finishes for the Lotus cars. Uh, it's been a good season so far. Yeah, I mean, we've had a good season so far. We exceeded our expectation considering the limited time we have had uh, to prepare the season. Obviously, we still have a lot of troubles, uh, troubles which we know uh, we can solve it, but probably not for this year. Uh, it's, it's probably worth thinking already about next year car and next year, next year project. But uh, anyway, last Sunday was another productive uh, Sunday, both cars to the end, even though on my side, I must admit, it was, uh, it was a tough weekend because uh, I've had a lot of failures during the weekend and the only uh, trouble-free day was on Sunday. Well, that's the best day for it to be trouble-free, of course. Yeah, of course, but you know, to build up the experience, to build up the performance and the speed, you need all the, all, all the weekend through. Now, it's really important for people to understand that uh, this is a new, t very famous name, but a new team. So when they look and see, oh, no points for Jana, no points for Heike, that's not what this is about. This is about uh, starting from scratch. Well, I remember when I came in here the first time, there was nothing, you know, roughly the walls were, were not even painted as white as they are now. So really, and this is what I'm talking about the last December, so only six, seven months ago. So they've done an incredible good job setting everything up, building the team, the factory, uh, all the facilities. But obviously the time is very limited to create a winning team. Uh, what we are doing, as I say, we are exceeding our expectation and most people's expectation. We are getting closer to the top and established the team, but we still uh, need some time. So I would say that this is a transition season where we really have to build up things and get ready for next year's challenge. Now, we refer to Lotus as a new team, but as, as you know better than most people, really famous old name. You look at the sort of guys who drove Lotus, Jimmy Clark and uh, Graham Hill and Emerson Fittipaldi and Ayrton Senna, and the list, is, the list is endless. Do you get a sense of tradition, a, a sense of history, being here and driving for Lotus? It's a huge heritage here, and history. If you just walk uh, around the corner and you go uh, and visit uh, Clive Chapman with his old uh, classic Lotus team, you can breathe in the air all the people, all the results, all the history which has gone through that walls and that, that, that factory. So I made it, I did it, and uh, it was just amazing. And obviously being part of Lotus, being a Lotus driver, it's something uh, very important for probably any drivers. Just like, just like driving for a Ferrari, we don't have to forget that this was one of the most um, powerful, strong team uh, at that day. Now obviously it's everything new, we're rebuilding everything, and uh, we are all putting on the much effort as possible to take this name back to where it belongs, to the top. Um, now, Jano, uh, you've won one Grand Prix, you've raced many, many times, but if you're going to win one Grand Prix, it may as well be Monaco. Well, obviously, I am one of the lucky drivers who won in Monaco back in 2004 with a pole position, so I basically dominated the, the Grand Prix weekend. And it would be nice to do it again with a lot of uh, we, we are working, working are in progress. Now, what else do we uh, want to know about Jarno Trulli? First of all, you're Italian, your parents are Italian, you have a Finnish Christian name. Please explain. Well, it's, uh, it's very simple. Uh, my, my parents, they were passionate about motorsport in general. And in the 70s, there was a Jarno Sarinen, a Finnish uh, motorcycle rider, a great driver as well as a great person. Uh, unfortunately, in 1973, he, he lost his. Uh, he passed away. He lost. He, he lost his bike, and uh, he basically was killed in an accident in Monza, together with the Pasolini. And uh, so my parents they just thought, you know, the name was nice, the, the, the person was great, so they named me after him. And uh, I remember now I've discovered a lot of people with the same age as me, he was born between 73, 74. A lot of people which has Yarno name is because of Yarno Sarina. Oh, really? So uh, it's, it's, it's funny because nowadays instead, I have found a lot of kids which are named Yarno because of me. 
Oh really? That's yeah. interesting. So when you were well, back in Italy, you mean people Italians as well? Around the younger? world. Around the world. Really? Yeah. So when you were a, a boy at school and all your friends were, I don't know, were called Paolo and Giuseppe and when they come up to me and say, "What's your name?" Sorry, <laughs> Gennaro, Jaco. They will never get it right at the first time, which is I, I can understand that. Now, what else, Jana? Now, I understand that you have some vineyards back home in the Abruzzo region, and you make your own wine. But you sound like my kind of guy. <laughs> Well, it's a family business, family passion more than business. It has started 10 years ago. We have uh, restarted the old business of my grandfather, which used to make wine in a very small quantity. And then with friends and stuff, with professional people of this business, we made up something very great because now we are producing 800,000 bottles, selling them all around the world, from Japan to US, uh, Malaysia, anywhere in, in England as well. So we are very successful. We're still young because 10 years old uh, as a real estate is not uh, a, a, big, uh, a big deal, but we are growing up and we are getting better and better. We produce uh, uh, red Montepulciano uh, wine, white uh, Trebino d'Abruzzo and Cerasolo Rosé, plus many other products. We have more than 27 different labels. And uh, you know, the family is involved, the friends are involved and the Podere Castellani is doing very well. I guess the problem is, Jano, as you're either racing or testing so often, you can hardly ever drink the stuff. Unfortunately, yeah, during the race weekend or testing weekend, I keep uh, away from the wine. But I can tell you, during, uh, before the race weekend, very often, especially at the overseas races, I, I very often do wine tasting, degustation around with restaurants and people and, you know, customers. And they do enjoy it. They do enjoy the wine and we enjoy also the story behind it. Yeah, maybe when you win your next Grand Prix they'll let you uh, open up a bottle of your own wine as opposed to champagne. I hope it will happen soon and they have a very nice Prosecco Paparazzi which I will be more than happy to open it. Now also, uh, Jana, just talk to us a little bit about uh, L'Aquila. Uh, obviously the Italian town was hit by, uh, by an earthquake a couple of years ago and I know that you've put a lot of work and effort into uh, helping rehabilitate the town. Yeah, uh, I, start, I launched this campaign uh, straight after the uh, L'Aquila was hit by the earthquake and uh, after one year I must admit that I'm really satisfied uh, about the, the outcome because uh, as a single person, a uh, uh, single fundraiser, uh, I raised more than 700,000 euro which I have donated for several projects which are now uh, uh, working in L'Aquila and so I'm, I'm really proud of, about it because I am I know I can't save the world, I can't say, say, I can't save L'Aquila, but I can give my support. Fantastic. Well, that's really good to hear, Jan. And it just goes to show that, uh, you know, uh, Formula One drivers, there's much more to them than, than, than simply uh, yeah, racing. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we are the lucky person in this world. And somehow we have to take our lucky, uh, to use our lucky, in order to help people which have, have, have not been very lucky. In this case, uh, you know, uh, we, we have... I do personally a lot of lot of um, charity events through the years, which I'm not gonna, you know, sponsor it. I just say that when I have my time, when I have free time, and someone call me up and I can go, I go for it because I know uh, I personally think I'm a very lucky uh, boy. Well, to, to finish, uh, Jan, and thank you for your time today. Um, I'm sure Lotus will continue to be successful. Uh, maybe next year start picking up some points and, I don't know, maybe two years' time, podiums and, and so on and so forth. Um, in the meantime, it's a very interesting season this year, especially with 25 points now for a win. How do you think it's going to go? Well, I think it's going to be an interesting uh, season, even because uh, you know, the winners change. McLaren seems very consistent with Hamilton and Button staying there on top of uh, the driver list. So, you know, it's going to be interesting until the last uh, race, probably. And uh, we can score points. We're racing. So we know that it's hard, but we can still fight for, uh, for the point. Okay, thank you. Sure.